In this tutorial, we're going to be building a simple calculator app from scratch using .NET, MAUI, and XAML. Let's get started. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the community edition of Visual Studio and testing our app on an Android device. If you don't have Visual Studio installed, visit the link in the description for guidance on how to set up your computer for .NET MAUI development. First, we'll create a new .NET MAUI project in Visual Studio. To do this, click on the Create a New Project button on the Start window. On the next screen, select .NET MAUI. From the Project Types drop-down to filter out the options, then select .NET MAUI App and click Next. Here, you can name your project and select the location where it should be created on your PC. Once you're done, proceed to the next screen. Leave .NET 8.0 selected as the target framework and click the Create button. Once the project has been created with a default template, we can now run the application on any platform we're building for. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be testing our UI on Android. So in the drop down next to the green play button at the top of the screen, make sure to select the device or Android emulator you want to run the app on. Next, click the green play button or press F5 to start debugging the app. Once the build and installation process is done, the app will automatically launch on your selected device or emulator. Now that the app is running, we can test out .NET MAUI's hot reload functionality, which allows us to make changes to the UI without having to restart the application. To test this, you can modify the text in the label to say welcome to your daily dose of .NET, and you should see the changes immediately reflected in your application. Pretty cool, right? So now let's get started with building this calculator UI. .NET MAUI provides different layout controls that we can use to position elements on the screen any way we want. Looking at our reference image, we can see that there are two main sections stacked vertically, the calculator display and the buttons. We can achieve this simple layout using different approaches, but for simplicity, we're going to be using a grid. So we'll delete the scroll view layout and everything inside it, and we'll define a grid with two rows, which we can specify using the row definitions property. The first row will have a height of 200, while the second will have a height of star, which means that it'll take up the rest of the space. Since we've modified the mainpage.xaml file, we'll need to also modify the mainpage.xaml.cs file and remove the onCounterClicked method. Now that we've defined the base layout, let's work on the first section of the screen, the calculator's display. From the reference image, we can see that this section has rounded corners on the bottom edges. To do this, we can use the border control, which lets us define a stroke shape. We can set the stroke shape to round rectangle and enter values for how rounded the edges should be. The order of the values goes from top left to top right to bottom left, and then bottom right. So to achieve the look in the image, we can set the top left and top right values to zero and the bottom ones to 25. Next, we can begin adding our controls inside of the border control. The calculator display consists of two vertically stacked controls, an editable text field and a read only text display. So we're gonna use a vertical stack layout and place an entry control and a label inside of it. We'll put in some sample text in both fields so we can see what we're working with and adjust the design as needed. First, we can see that the text for both controls needs to be horizontally aligned to the right. So we can set the horizontal text alignment on both controls to end. We can also set the font size to reasonable values for both controls. As you can see, our entry control has an underline by default and pops up the keyboard anytime it gets focused as it normally should. However, we won't be needing the soft keyboard as we'll be using the calculator buttons to input data. So what we can do is disable that functionality. And we can also remove the underline as well. To do that on Android, we'll head to the platforms folder. Under Android, open the mainapplication.cs file. Here in the constructor, we can modify the look of the entry control on Android using the entry handler's property mapper. This line of code will set the underline color to transparent while the other one turns off the keyboard pop-up functionality for the entry. We can also remove the text in the title bar by going to the appshell.xaml file and removing the title property from the shell content control. Now we can begin adding the calculator buttons and setting up our colors and styles so that our application can look great in both light mode and dark mode. To do this, we'll create a nested grid in the second row of our main grid and add a couple of rows and columns. We'll have five rows in total, with each row having a value of star, meaning that it'll take up a fifth of the available space. As for the columns, we'll have four in total, with each column taking up a fourth of the available space. 
Now that we've set up our grid layout, we can begin adding in our buttons. First, we'll work on the design for the clear button, and then we'll use that to create a style which we can apply to the other buttons. So we'll add a button and set the grid.row and grid.column properties to zero. We'll set the width and height request values to 80, and then we'll set the text value to AC. Here's how it looks on the screen. Let's now tweak the look of the button to better match our target design. From our reference image, we can see that the buttons have a circular shape. We can easily achieve this by setting the corner radius property of our button to a value that's half the width and height value. So we'll set the corner radius value to 40. Next, we can set the font size to 32 and set the font attributes value to bold. As you can see, our button now looks quite similar to the design, but we still need to work on the colors. Working with colors in .NET MAUI is quite easy. We can add custom colors for our design in the colors.saml file, which you can find in the styles folder inside the resources folder. So we'll add several colors, which we're going to need to implement both the light and dark versions of our design. Now that we've added our custom colors, we can come back to our clear button and set its background color to the custom light green color we just added. Then we'll set the text color to black. This looks great in light mode, but if we switch over to dark theme, we'll see that the colors could use some slight tweaking to make it look better. Fortunately, we can specify a different color for the dark theme by using what's called an app theme binding. This syntax allows us to specify different colors for light theme and dark theme. So if we check our application again, we can see that the color changes depending on the theme selected. We can also apply an app theme binding for the text color property so that it's set to black when the app is in light mode and white for dark mode. With our button looking good, we can now begin creating the other buttons in the grid. However, you'll notice that the buttons have a lot of similar property values. For example, they all have the same values for the width and height, as well as the same corner radius. Also, we can see that the number buttons all have the same background color, while the math operator buttons share a different background color. So to avoid unnecessarily setting these values repeatedly on every button, we are going to create a couple of explicit styles for our buttons. While we can place our styles in the styles.xaml file in the resources section, we're going to keep them in this file for simplicity. We'll call our first style the base calculator button style and set its target type to button. This style won't be directly applied to our buttons, but will serve as a base for the other styles, which we'll add in a moment. Next, we can begin adding setters for properties. First, we'll add a setter for the width request property and then for the height request, and also for the text color, font size, and font attribute properties. With our base style in place, we'll now create a style for the number buttons. We'll set the based on properties value to our base calculator button style, which will make it inherit all the values from the base style. Now we can add a setter for the background color as well as the text color. Finally, we'll add the operator button style, which is very similar to the number button style, but with different values for the colors. Now that we've created our styles, we can remove the properties we've moved over to the styles from our button and set the style property instead. Then we can copy and paste our button and modify grid.row and grid.column values, as well as the text values to fill up the rest of the grid. Since our clear button has a different background color than the other operator buttons, we can override the style by setting the color directly on the button. Finally, we'll modify the background color of our calculator's display to use an app theme binding in our custom colors. We'll also set the stroke color value to transparent. So when we run the app, we can see that it now looks really good in both light theme and dark theme. We'll now add some final tweaks to the UI and wire up the logic of our application using the MVVM architecture. If we compare our current UI to our reference, we'll see that we're missing the toolbar at the top, which has some secondary toolbar menu items. We won't be implementing the functionality for any of the menu items, but we can add them to our app just for visual purposes. So we'll add a content page dot toolbar items at the top and define multiple toolbar items inside with their order set to secondary so they don't show up directly on the app bar, but in the overflow menu. Now, if we run our app, we should see that we now have the toolbar at the top. However, we need to tweak the colors. We can do this by setting the shell dot background color and shell dot foreground color properties in our content page. Finally, we can add a padding of 12 to our buttons grid. With our UI looking good, we can now turn our attention to implementing the calculator functionality using the MVVM pattern. If you're not familiar with the MVVM pattern, you can check out this excellent video by James Montemagno, where he explains what MVVM is 
and why it's a popular architectural pattern for building apps with XAML. We're going to be using the community toolkit.mvvm new git package, which is going to make our lives much easier as you'll see. So we'll install the new git package for our project. Next, we'll create a new class in the root of our project and call it main page view model. Ideally, when using the MVVM pattern, we should have different folders for our views and view models, but we're just going to do this quick and dirty for demo purposes. So we'll make our class public and switch to a file scope namespace. Next, we'll inherit from observable object, which comes from the community toolkit NuGet package we just installed. And we'll add the using statement for that at the top. Also, we'll need to make the class partial so it can work with the source generators. Now that we've done that, we can begin adding our properties and binding to them from our UI. First, we'll add private string fields for the calculator display, which we'll call expression display and result display. Now for MVVM, we should also have public properties with getters and setters where we can invoke the property changed event, right? Well, since this is an observable object, we can simply add an observable property decorator atop each of our private fields and the source generators from the MVVM package will take care of everything else. Pretty cool, right? We can now head back to our main page.xaml file and begin binding to the properties in our view model. First though, we'll need to tell our view about our view model. A simple way to do this is in the code behind for the main page view. So in the main page.xaml.cs class, we can change our constructor to accept a main page view model instance and then assign that instance to the binding context property. For this to work, however, we'll need to set up dependency injection for our view and view model. So in the malprogram.cs file, we'll add builder.services.add transient calls for the main page and the main page view model classes. Now in our main page.xaml file, we can set the text property of the calculator display entry to bind to the expression display property in our view model and set the text property of the label to bind to the result display property as well. To test our bindings, we'll set the properties in our main page view models constructor to some sample values. Running the app, we can see that the values from our view model are reflected in the UI. Finally, we can add a method to our main page view model to handle when the calculator buttons are pressed. This method will take in a string, which we'll call button text, which we'll use to determine which button was pressed. We can easily convert this to a command by adding the relay command decorator from the community toolkit package. Then in our main page.xaml file, we can bind the command property in our base calculator button style to the handle button press command, which is generated for us automatically by the community toolkit package. We can also bind the command parameter property to the text property of the button that was clicked on. Now, we can add some simple code in the handle button press method to run the calculations using the datatable.compute method and display the result on the UI. If we now run the application, we can see that it mostly works except for some edge cases. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below and check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching your daily dose of .NET, and I'll see you in the next one.